Welcome to Seriously Speaking. Last week we were talking with the stars of the moment, Sambasa, and then of course Salma Phillips, who is a film and a television producer from the North. And um, the conversation was really around film content. That's why I signed off last week, promising to be back here with Femi Udugwemi. I've called the do-do of content. <laughs> and, but I'll take a break and I'll return on the show today. And don't forget the beauty about this show is that you can follow us on all our platforms and even follow me on Twitter and be part of this conversation as it's going on. So we'll be right back if you don't go away. Welcome to Seriously Speaking. Yes, welcome back. Femi, my, you're still my aburu. <laughs> <laughs> Married to my aburu. So you're still my aburu. It's nice to have you on the show. Very nice. I can it's call you at short you. notice and you will be here. Well, you, you have, uh, Yoruba say you, you pour water, you step on, <laughs> <laughs> on a wet floor. You've been a great friend. Thank but you. But I'm very glad and excited about what you're doing now, Battleground. It's like, after the work with all the documentary, it comes to documentary production, film production, you're there, we know what you can do. You've done Tinsel, you've done all sorts, you, you've judged best movies, everything in the content area. And I'm like, there you are coming out with battleground. It's like you kept quiet and came back again. What happened? Well, I wasn't quiet. I was making, oh. I was making battleground. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think that um, I, I love storytelling and, and the most dynamic creatives are storytellers. Um, so it doesn't really matter what the platform is. Mm -hmm. There are artists who create um, amazing stories on canvas. There are radio producers who are telling incredible stories. So it's all about storytelling. It's all about, you know, really wanting to entertain, to provoke, to make people think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But our stories are us. Our mm -hmm. stories are how we engage with our environment. Our stories are how we better understand each other, how we debate, how we um, reflect. And so I, I think there's so much in our stories um, as Nigerians that, you know, um, I'm, I'm really honored to be able to be to one be of those of, yeah. uh, storytellers provoking uh, our audiences. To, I mean, you've gone great well, like Pariga Boy, you. you know, all kinds of great, and because you tell me that a creative can go across all platforms. Yes. So you're comfortable zooming from film to documentary to series production, you know? But I mean, I, I think, you know, putting people into boxes is usually not good for the story. Um, there are some stories that lend themselves to be told uh, as a book. And there are some stories that translate very differently to cinema. Mm -hmm. um, those who read Half of a Yellow Sun and those who watched Half of a Yellow Sun Mm -hmm. understand that it's two different dimensions of the same story. Mm -hmm. um, that's why I think we are really privileged as storytellers, as directors, producers, and writers to be able to, um, to, to put our filter, mm -hmm. our perspective into how these stories are told. So I, I'm not really, I don't really care about what format it is. If I don't uh, really have a lot of money to make a film, I'll make it a documentary. <laughs> Oh, so that's what it is. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. I, I mean, we did some great work with River State, for example. Yes. I mean, I, I imagine yes. all the sunsets and all the things that she I shot. I really loved working with you. Uh -huh. I, I don't think enough people know that but, this is not yeah. all you do. Absolutely. Um, we had a great time. And I think what was important also was that, you know, together we, we put ourselves to the test to be able to create a story mm -hmm. Um, about not just the government, but a people. Absolutely. And, and I um, think but it's... Uh, boy. I mean, I exactly. made your intro to that thing. Anyway, this is just an aside. Now, I, do, I know you don't like talking about Nollywood, right? As Nollywood as we see it. Mm -hmm. But I, 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 I'm doing this edition because I feel that um, content is something that people are not thinking about when they're producing or storytelling. It's not usually what's driving Nollywood as much as it should. And I'm worried about that. Well, I think there are, there are a few things that should worry us. Um, we're, we're succumbing already to trends. Mm -hmm. People are looking to retell a story that has done well in the theater, and then it becomes the way stories are told. Um, so we're making the same movie over and over again, which is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also this concept that there are only a type of actor that makes for a successful movie. And I, I find these things limiting. 
because Nollywood has come a long way, quality-wise. It has come a long way because of technology. But it has also come a long way because we've constantly been curious, constantly experimenting, and we can't get here now and then start formularizing storytelling. What does that mean? I mean, well, you know, you now have guys who sit down and tell a, a, a young script writer that, you know, you, you must make another wedding party. Mm, for example? I mean, that, that's, for me, um, the fastest way to destroy a writer, mm -hmm. a creative. Um, if there was no wedding party before wedding party, it means that there is capacity for something else that would be as strong mm -hmm. and as funny and as winning as wedding party. There was uh, the Jamaican story before wedding Absolutely, party. Absolutely, yeah. And so there's just room to tell all kinds of stories. But for me especially, I think we need to begin to also get serious that storytelling is also about litigating our history. And that's what 76 did isn't, so isn't, beautifully. Isn't it, isn't it about uh, what people want to see? I think it breaks into two. If you only make movies trying to speculate about what people want to see, yeah. um, you'll be all over the place because people come in very various <laughs> modes. <laughs> so who are you talking to? I was so stunned. I mean, Giddy Blues did so well Absolutely. in Elori, for instance. I couldn't have imagined it because it's, a, it's an urban story. But the cinemas in Elori just kept filling up. We had to add dates in Elori. If you'd asked me before, I would have said impossible. Mm -hmm. It did so well in Cano. There was a riot because the projector went off. And I thought, you know, taking it to, to mm -hmm. Cano, given well, the kind of story. What is that a function of how hungry people are for stories they can connect to? Or just for something to happen? I think we just need to respect the fact that the Nigerian audience is exposed already to everything. Internationally, I mean, they, they're watching all kinds of series, all kinds of stories. So the benchmarks are not Nigerian. Nollywood is no longer a Nigerian film industry. Nollywood is simply a film industry. Uh, we don't have Nigerian filmmakers. We have filmmakers who are Nigerians. And so we begin to, we need to begin to um, look at our benchmarks. It's a global world. Mm -hmm. The walls are down. If I make a, 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 a content today, my friends in India, my friends in America are watching it online. My Vimeo, there are people I don't know who go there and watch. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a global global um, creative community. Mm -hmm. And I think the concept of, you know, thinking that, you know, my goal is to be better than wedding party yes, is, I was just is, thinking is that, so I mean, silly mm -hmm. and so limiting. Um, you know, my sister used to well, love it, that it, phrase when they said every, a woman that wanted to be like a man has low ambitions. And, and that's the way <laughs> I think about, about it when we talk about, you know, mm -hmm. um, cinema and storytelling and looking for what we win rather than making a great story. Okay, a benchmark is no longer Nigeria. That's what you're saying. But also, I, I, I think, I like the example that you've given with the fact that, um, that the wedding party was so successful. Suddenly everybody's thinking, I must make a movie like this to be able to be successful. So it determines what success is. So isn't success about also making money? That's where I think the error is. Oh, really? The success is not, uh, it's not making money. Success is making an impact. Success, success is redefining, you know, the norm. Success, success is, is taking storytelling to another level. Success is doing something that your colleagues look at and go like, wow, I could have done that. Yeah. Um, success is expanding the spaces of our storytelling. I'm totally enamored and I'm blown away by way, what Kemi Adetiba did with Wedding Party. But there was a lot of hard work in that. Mm -hmm. The one thing she did not do was regurgitate. Yeah, she chose and so to... it's silly that people who want to be as successful wish to regurgitate. Mm -hmm. It's ironic. Mm -hmm. um, the well, same... don't be killing Wedding Party 2 before it comes out. No, 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 no. <laughs> hey, I'm, I, I'm totally... You're just being a professional. I'm going to watch myself. I, I, I love 76. Mm -hmm. For me, that's one I of the greatest movies we've done. Mm -hmm. Why? It's taken a slice of our history 
and, 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 and put a human story in the heart of it. Mm -hmm. But the greatest part of it is the fact that they stretch themselves to be able to do a historical piece and do it with integrity, with common sense. Without, without compromising. It, it yeah. looked right. Absolutely. And, and that's how we're going to grow this next generation of storytellers. Well, the good thing, though, is I have another storyteller that's not, you talk about success not being about making money, success about telling stories and doing, as a young man, I mean, not only because it's a do, you know, I kind of like the fellow. I love his work already, <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> so I'm going to take a break so I can bring um, Eric Agimir to join us, who's uh, a producer and director of uh, Slow, Country, Slow Country, that's been making all kinds of waves. Beautiful and, work. Okay, so we're back with Eric joining us on Set in a Minute. <laughs> 